All right, what's up guys? Uh, today I am testing out my new camera setup thing or like this little $10 mount I got on Amazon so I can mount my camera on the window of the car and that's why I went, this window's up for sound. Uh, it already looks like the camera's shaking around more than I wanted it to though, so this may look like crap and if it does, I'm sorry. But today I wanted to talk about the Forza Horizon 3 car list. So they've already released like over 150 names. I think they're gonna be on it and it's gonna have a lot more than that. And it's one of the biggest car lists or it is the biggest car list of any of the Horizon games, which I think is pretty awesome. But I think there are a couple of exceptions and these aren't necessarily cars that need to be on the list. Obviously developers can do whatever they want. Some of them are cars that I think should be on the list and some of them are cars I just kind of want to be on the list for my own reasons. So we are going to talk about that really quickly. Now, it's incredibly hot out today, and I'm really sweaty. I just spent the morning detailing the daily driver because it's been like three weeks since I was able to wash and vacuum it, and it looked disgusting. But it looks really pretty now, so I'm all hot and sweaty, but we're supposed to get rain here later, and I haven't taken the spider out in a couple weeks uh, because of the weather. So I need to do that, shake the cobwebs off. I've got autocross in like another week or two. So I'm not like I need any excuse to take it for a drive. I love it, but I've got good reasons. Okay, so the first car that I don't understand why it hasn't been announced for Forza Horizon 3 yet, and I think actually needs to be in the game, is the Holden Monero V2 and VZ generation, or generations, depending on how you look at it. They've announced some other older Holden Moneros, and they've announced the, I believe it's the GTS Malou, which is pretty similar and it's a lot newer, but the Holden Monero was basically the Pontiac GTO that was sold in North America. And that meant it had either a 3.8 liter supercharged V6, which I'm not sure you could get the supercharged V6 in America, but the 3.8 liter supercharged V6 or a 5.7 liter V8 engine, the same engine that was in the GTO. And you get that with a four-speed automatic or a six-speed manual. And you could also get kind of a little trucklet version of it, like a new El Camino almost, uh, which is really, really awesome. And it's a really cool, slightly modern day muscle car. Now, much like the GTO, the quality wasn't amazing and they didn't sell as well as they hoped and they killed them off after a few years. But I think it's still a really cool car, maybe slightly underappreciated. And as cool as it is to have the older Holden Moneros uh, and the newer GTS Malou, I would really like to see the mid 2000s one because that was kind of one of the first cars that kicked off the modern horsepower race that we have going on today was the Pontiac GTO. Uh, but the whole Monero, again, is kind of the same car, so why not? It's Australian. Let's have some more Australian cars. Uh, next car is the 2017 Fiat Spider. Now, the Fiat Spider is largely uh, a new Miata. It shares the same assembly line, like the same chassis, a lot of the same parts. It does have its own unique engine. It has 160 horsepower, 1.4 liter turbocharged four, so a pretty small engine with a turbo, which is cool, and the biggest reason I'd be interested in it is it's like a Miata, but it's a little more exotic. It's pretty cheap, but it has a real raspy exhaust note and it's a little more exotically styled. Now it's probably less reliable because Fiats aren't very reliable cars. So I would probably rather have the Miata if I was gonna own it, but if I'm gonna drive them in a video game, the Fiat Spider looks pretty aggressive and it uh, sounds really, really nice and people say it drives really, really well. So I would definitely love to see that in the game if they're looking for any more roadsters. Up next is the, I believe it's Series 1 and Series 2 uh, Land Rover Discovery. So we've got the Land Rover Defender 90 coming into the game already, and we have a new supercharged Range Rover. The supercharged Range Rover, like, it's a little bit too fancy for my taste. It's like an Escalade. Like, yeah, it can go off-road. Well, I don't, it go off-road a lot better than an Escalade. But it can go off-road. It's not a slouch, but it's not as true of a Land Rover as some of the older ones. And the Defender 90, is such a true Land Rover that it's a little bit hardcore. And I think it's awesome it's in the game, just like the old Willys Jeep is in the game. I think it's a great choice. But I'd like to see kind of the more intermediate Land Rover too, which was the Discovery. And uh, the thing that I like about the Discovery is it's got a ton of glass, like had a great sunroof, moonroof type thing. It's big, it can hold lots of people, but it still has some of those luxurious creature comforts in its day that you would have found like in the Range Rover, like it had the much nicer interior. The Defender 90 has a garbage interior. I mean, it's an off-road vehicle. It doesn't need to have a nice interior. Very utilitarian. But the Discovery was a little more of the everyman's Land Rover. And I think because they're focusing so much on off-road stuff in the Horizon series, it would be just a really nice addition. And I'd like to do stupid stuff to it and put stupid engines in it. Up next is, well, 
this car, the Toyota MR2 Spider. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, why? Nobody cares about the Spider. I care about the MR2 Spider. A lot of people don't. It's not fast. Let me just do a quick pull for you, getting out of this turn so you can see. Not that fast, but it is the quickest non-turbo MR2. So there was the second gen turbo that everybody loves so much and they actually sell for more than these a lot of the time and those were really quick cars those were cool cars but this is the quickest non-turbo i believe it's also the lightest it's a convertible and roadsters are always cool and from many reviews and comparisons it seems like it probably handles the best now i haven't driven the other two extensively or really at all i've sat in them i've ridden around in one or two of them never driven one so i can't say personally but this handles amazingly well I've done some suspension mods, other things that make this handle a little bit better than a stock Spider. But even stock, this is an incredibly well handling vehicle uh, that I think doesn't get as much love as it should. And understandably, they didn't sell that many. The styling's a little bit weird. It's a little bit harder to work on because it's a mid engine. And the first gens like this one, or the first uh, revisions of the third gen had bad oil burning problems that led to a lot of engines having to be swapped like this one. So I know it's a pipe dream. I know there's almost no chance this car would ever actually end up in most racing games. I've only ever seen it in one, I think. And I can't remember which game right now. It might've been an old Gran Turismo. But I really, really like this car. I think it's an underrated car and I would love to see it in the game, especially if you can do the 2ZZ swap out of a Celica GTS. Now this next car I'm sure is gonna be announced. Like there's no way this car is not gonna be announced and put in the game. The Datsun S30 and S130, the 240Z and the 280Z are in like every racing game. They were never very fast cars, never very quick. I think they topped out at like 180 net horsepower for the best one. So certainly not like a fast vehicle, but people really like them. They handled well for the time. People love to do swaps in them all the time. They've got very, very unique styling that's influenced all the Z cars since then. And I don't think there's any way that car is not going to be announced at some point. It just seems odd that they wouldn't put it on the initial car list because it's the type of car that everyone expects to be in most racing games. So maybe they won't put it in and that's fine, but I would be very, very surprised. Okay, this next car is kind of like another personal favorite of mine. I've never driven one, I've never owned one, and they're not like that exotic, but I think it's odd they're not in the game. And that is the Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4. I mean, for crying out loud, there are four Evos in the game, four generations of Evos. I guess there are tons of Evo fanboys who really like Evos and they want as many as they can get. That's the same reason there's three M3s in the game. And GT is everything the Toyota Super 4th Gen is, and in my opinion, it's better. Now, you can roast me in the comments if you want. I know the 4th Gen Supra, the Mark IV Supra, is renowned and for good reason, but the interior is pretty plain and boring, and they cost like 40 grand for a turbo model. If they hadn't blown up on the import scene around the late 90s, early 2000s, and if Brian O'Connor hadn't driven one in the Fast and the Furious, I'd like to think that the Supra wouldn't be as popular as it is now. But I do really, really like them as cars, but the 3000 GT has, in my opinion, a much nicer and more futuristic interior. And of course, futuristic in the 90s meant that most of it doesn't work these days. But the car was comfortable, very nice looking on the inside, a little bit exotic, about as exotic as the Super, which I think is a very exotic looking car for its time. But the 3000 GT is fast. You could get it with up to a 320 horsepower twin turbo V6, which is an awesome, awesome amount of power for a mid 90s car. And there's no Super tax. You can get a good one for like 10 to $15,000 and get one in not good shape for like four or five. There's so many cars in the game they feel like almost duplicates of each other. Like there's three generations of M3, but curiously no E30 M3. Uh, I'm not really sure who cares about the late 2000s M3s. They're very good cars, uh, but they don't really have the like mystique that the earlier gens do, the E30, the E36, and the E46. So we have those, which is totally fine. I'm a BMW fan. I like BMWs. We have four Evos. There's probably gonna be a bunch of WRXs, but there's not as many of like the other cars that a lot of these Japanese automakers made, like the MR2 Spider, like the Eclipse Spider, like the 3000 GT VR4. Cool cars that I think deserve their place in racing games, and especially in racing games that are a little more casual and don't take themselves that seriously, like Forza Horizon. So anyway guys, it uh, looks like it's gonna rain soon. 
and I don't really want to get caught out in the rain. It was supposed to start sometime this afternoon. So I'm going to turn around and head back, but hopefully the audio quality and the video quality in this hasn't been too bad. I like doing vlog type stuff in the car because I like any excuse to drive my car around. So if you guys like seeing these, just let me know and maybe I'll do more of them even if I'm not talking about car related stuff because again, I really just need any excuse to take this thing for a drive. So thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you next time.